than you have from God. But you have to be willing to sacrifice more of yourself than you have ever sacrificed to get it. This doesn't happen because I'm a prophet. This doesn't happen, bless God, because, oh, how I love Jesus. This happened because I learned to seek the face of God in a depth that went past the church. It went past what the church could teach. The best teacher in this world is the Holy Ghost. The best way to be taught is in the supernatural. The problem is few people have those types of opportunities. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's go to another scripture here. Now, number 623, number 623 through 26. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. 623. Now, speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, on this wise ye shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. He says, bless them. Notice, notice he didn't say bless yourselves. And, and, and folks, this is important because you see... He's not saying, well, I need this and I need that. Well, you say, yeah, but the Lord, the Lord said speak. The Lord is saying speak tonight to you. See, some of you desperately would love to have an angel show up in your front yard, bedroom. <laughs> but what you don't understand, God has already spoken. His written word is holy. It is alive. All you have to do is what? Speak it. Believe it. Visualize it. And it will come to pass. All right? But he said, bless, bless the children of Israel. Bless the children of Israel. Don't, don't be blessing your family. Huh? Now, you should pray for your family every day. All right? I pray for my family every day, okay? I pray for you every day. The list is getting longer and longer and longer because we're getting more people and more people. I need some intercessors, okay? I need some people that will stand the gap, make up the hedge, that will get up in the midnight hour when they're stirred by their spirit man and cry out to this mighty God in their behalf. You can change circumstances on the other side of the world right now, this very minute, if you learn how. You might save somebody's life. You ever wake up in the middle of the night and, oh, I guess i got to go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I need a drink of water. Water's good. And get back in bed and just go back to sleep. Got my hand up. Some of you want a visitation, don't you? Yes. Folks, that's the way God visits. Mine's an automatic alarm after all these years. It just wow I'm awake. Anywhere from 1 30, 2 o'clock in the morning, it's over. I'm up. That's it. I'm called of God to pray for you and them. But you see, when you wake up and you either roll over and go back to sleep, get a, go to the bathroom, get a drink, go back and go to sleep, here's a series of this thing. How many want to be used by God? Raise your hand. Hallelujah. That makes me feel real good. You want to be used by God? Mm -hmm. Now listen, somebody could be dying on the other side of this world. And God chose you, 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 us, to get out of that bed 
get on our faces before him and pray. Well, I got to know what I'm praying about. No, you don't. That, that's got you in as much trouble now. It's not even funny. No, we're, we're going to teach you back into some things that we taught before somewhat. But you have to understand you could be making the difference in somebody's life but getting up when you're unctioned by God. There's all kinds of stories that people give to me about why, well, now I have to have my sleep. That was one of my biggies when I was a boilermaker. Lord, I got to have my sleep here. Man. I got to get up. I, you know, I'm, I'm, we I'm welded in temperatures like we've been having. That's no fun. And Lord, you know, I got to let somebody else take care of this, you know, just for a while till the weather cools down. You actually was that way? Oh, yeah. Lazy. How did God ever use you? I repented with a true heart toward God. And when he unctioned me, I got out of bed and I prayed. And it got to the point after four or six months, many times I would think, okay, okay, it, I, I, you know, it seems like it's lifted. I'm going back to bed. I lay down and 10 minutes later, the unction would come. What, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. The key here, prophet, is if I can understand and you can explain to me, what is the unction? Oh, yeah, I can explain it to you. It isn't the angel saying, get up! <laughs> Wish it was. That would have been a lot easier, right? <laughs> We'd all get up, right? Oh, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up! <laughs> I love it. The unction is that you want to do the will of God so much in your life that you are willing, now listen to me, you are willing, every time you wake up, believe it's God calling you to pray. Well, what if it isn't? Don't make any difference. Get up and pray. But if you'll do that, you know what that'll solve? That will solve the devil stealing from you intercession. We all have excuses, okay? Many of you could have had an excuse not to have been here this weekend. But you know, I've taught a long, long time ago to all of you, you do what you want to do, okay? Don't you kid yourself. You did this weekend what you wanted to do this weekend. And the ones that didn't come, they did what they wanted to do this weekend. The deeper depths of intercession have everything to do with giving up and giving in. You have to change this here, this mindset. You've got to bring your minds to a point where, bless God, you are determined that you're going to stand the gap, make up the hedge, spiritually, supernaturally, for your family, your friends, and anybody else that's on the other side of this world that the Lord God needs you to be praying for so they can live. Some of us as intercessors on the day that we stand before the Lord God or in years later are going to have people come up to us and going to say, thank you. Because you got up and prayed, I lived 30 years. Thank you that you unselfishly, and if you hadn't prayed, I would have died that night. And you know what, folks? Because you don't have confidence in your prayer life, you don't think that what I just said is really the truth, even though I said it, and most of you best be afraid to admit that you think I'm lying. <laughs> like that part too. You have to have confidence in your prayer life. You have to have confidence that God wants to use you. Say, God! God! I want you to use me. I want you to use me. And you know what you just did? You just volunteered. 
<laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Love that part too. Woo All right, move on. I got, now listen, I got to make 14 pages in order for us to stop to eat, and I'm only on page two, and I've been here for almost an hour. Now, Deckard's either going to have to do a lot more reading and a lot less storytelling, or y'all are going to have to eat breakfast. <laughs> never mind, never mind. We'll, we'll, we'll get there. Si uh, 16 numbers, 16 numbers, 46. Number 16, 46. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer and put fire therein from off the altar and put on incense and go quickly into the congregation and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord, the plague is begun. I hope you remember the story. We're not going to go back through it. And Aaron took, uh, took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation and behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people and he stood between the dead and the living, and the plague was stayed. Now they that died in the plague were 14,700, beside them that died about the matter of Korah. And Aaron returned unto Moses under the door, the tabernacle, the congregation, and said, well, I didn't say it, and said, and the plague was stayed. Now Moses commanded him. Moses knew something over in another realm, okay? Moses understood that the plague had begun. They had anybody that come in and say, Moses, Moses, we've got a plague going on out here. You're going to have to do something. You better do it quick. No, I said, look, Aaron, take the censer, okay? Take the censer and bless God, uh, uh, put, go among the people, put incense and make an atonement for the people. 48 says, and he stood between the dead and the living. How many times have I gone into hospital rooms where people were gathered around and that person was dying? The doctors called the family in because they knew that he was going to die or she was going to die. How many times? As this prophet stood between the living and the dead. God, you can't take the spirit of this person. I stand the gap. I make up the heads. And I tear down the powers of darkness that have come to steal the life of this person. Satan, release him in the name of Yeshua. Release him in Yeshua's name. There's no way to give you the numbers of people that I've seen get up off of deathbeds and walk out of hospitals the next day. No way do I know. Don't need to know. But I know one thing. Now listen to me. If this prophet had not gone and stood between the living and the dead, those people would have all died. Somebody has got to stand up. Somebody has got to decide that there's more to this than me, myself, and I, and oh, what Jesus just told me. Somebody's got to do that. Somebody has got to give up and give in. Say, yea, Lord. Yea, Lord. Send me. Send me. That's where you got to come to. you got to come to the place of understanding. This thing's not just about you. This thing, this thing, the, 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 the. no, 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 no. It's about the people. It's about people that are in need, people that are dying, people that bless God that need to be delivered. And God knows, okay? He knows. Now, Deuteronomy 9, 18, if you'll be so kind. I hope you aren't getting too hungry. We're on page three now. We're moving right along. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. 
could be a long evening. Some of you would stay here with me if I stayed till daylight. Yep. Then there's some of you, bless God, going to go up and steal out and steal food out of the, the back end and take down to the motel room and eat it too, all right? <laughs> Takes us all, though, and we love all of you, okay? 9, 18, Deuteronomy, And I fell down before the Lord, as at the first forty days and forty nights. I did neither eat bread nor drink water. He fasted. Because of all your sins, which ye sinned in doing wickedly in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger. Well, now, uh, Prophet, uh, I just, uh, you know, I, well, I know what you're to do in secret, but I just felt like you, well, Prophet, you need, you need to know this. Uh, I just came off of a 30-day fast, and, uh, and well, I just want to tell you that, uh, uh, that uh, well, uh, you know, the Lord took me to some places in the spirit realm and showed me da 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 wah 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 wah. That's what it gets sounding like to me. I've heard so much of it. Moses wasn't praying for himself. Would you fast forty days and forty nights of no food? For somebody, let's say outside your family. Now, now, please, let's don't get into this. I'm a little more righteous next guy, and yes, I would because you wouldn't. Not where you sit tonight and walk with God, you wouldn't. Where I'm taking you, you will. You will sacrifice. You will deem them more important than you. You know what I've said to people for years. People judge me harshly. Now, some of you know that. Do you know what I've said to them? Do you love me enough that you go 30 days without food and pray? If you think I'm so wrong that the Lord God would deal with me and change my life. I've been in the ministry 40 years, folks. Not one person not one would say yes. Not one. What is that? It's not love. Number one, as I've tried to teach you, you can't be a Christian and judge anybody or anything. Contrary to God's Word. And yet I'm saying to them, would you love me enough to the past 30 days to ask the Lord God, would you intercede for me? No, but they'll judge me. See, that's the mindset of the church. We won't love each other. See, intercession is love. Say, intercession, intercession is, love. is love. It's love. It's love. It may be the strongest love that uh, ever be known on this earth. And Moses went 40 days and 40 nights without food. Okay? For the sins and the wickedness of the people. 19 says, For I was afraid of the anger and the hot displeasure wherewith the Lord was wrought against you to destroy you. But the Lord hearkened unto me at that time also. And the Lord was very angry with Aaron to have destroyed him. And I prayed for Aaron also the same time. Uh-huh. Is that why Aaron lived? That's the only reason Aaron lived. That's the only reason Aaron lived. Aaron was about to die. Moses interceding, Okay. 21, and I took your sin, the calf which you, you, he, he had made, and burned it with the fire, stamped it, and, and ground it every small, even until it was a small ass dust. And I cast the dust, therefore, into the brook, and that descended out of the mount. Oh, okay. All right. Wow. Wow. He goes on to say, and I want you to, uh, 24, he said, Ye have been rebellious against the Lord from the, de the day that I knew you. Oh, man. Thus I fell down before the Lord forty days and forty nights as I fell down at the first. 
because the Lord had said he would destroy you. I prayed therefore unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, destroy not thy people and thy inheritance which thou hast redeemed through thy greatness which thou hast brought forth out of Egypt with a mighty hand. Remember thy servant, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Look not unto the stubbornness of this people, nor to their wickedness, nor their sin. Now listen, he keeps going back and pointing out the righteous. Okay? He keeps going back and pointing out the righteous, the righteous, the righteous, the righteous, the righteous. How many of you have ever prayed and said, the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You need to put that in your prayer life. The righteousness of God in these men of God. That Lord God, that you raised them up, you promised unto them, and that promise is unto me and mine. Therefore, Lord God, Forgive them their sin, their wickedness, their stubbornness of great rebellion that they have come against you with. Some of you in this room have had that prayer prayed to this prophet in your behalf. Say thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. I can move heaven and I can move earth. And I know you want to. And if you will adhere unto this prophet, you're going to learn to. It's not going to be easy. Folks, again, I, I, I promise nobody a rose garden here. But I can tell you, because I do these things, you can do them. But it's going to cost. The Lord said what? You, you, better, count, you better count the cost here. You better, better count the cost. Are you willing to forsake all? Hmm? Uh-oh, now wait a minute. You've never heard this one before. Are you ready to forsake your silly little Jesus prayers? Huh? That you pray every day, moan, groan, carry on, and get down to a real prayer life? Because if you are, you can make this thing work. Prayer has to be something of which you mention not yourself. Now, let me tell you why. And we'll get the scripture here sometime this weekend. We're commanded to pray you one for another. Now, if I'm praying for you and you're praying for me, then I have no need to have to pray for myself, do I? Hmm? That's right. But if, in fact, you are so selfishly caught up in yourself, and most of us are, then you are going to spend your time praying for me, myself, and I, me and yourself, instead of me, mine, my family. That's what you're going to do. If I was to ask everybody in this room, how many of you have spent an hour this week praying for me? And Donna and this family, that please don't stand up. I wonder how many of you would stand up. Or I wonder how many few of you could stand up. See? Well, uh, 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 no, no, well, uh, uh, uh. I spent my time, I fulfilled the word, I pray for you and yours. I broke the yoke in some of your lives this week. I stood the gap. I made up the hedge. I cried out unto the Lord, my God, for you. My Lord and my God, I don't have time to pray for me and mine. I'm praying for you and yours. Somebody learned something tonight. Somebody learned something tonight. Amen. We're not going to win this until we grow up. Intercession are for the ones that have left the bottle, don't need the die-die, the diapers anymore, huh? That's walking on into the deeper things of God.
That's where we're going to take it. You know, I, I, I have said for a number of years, there's one thing about being around a prophet and a prophetic ministry. We'll either get you there or you're going to look like and seem like, not in the physical, but in the spiritual, you've been run over by a Mack truck. Okay? And that's where I'm taking you now. I can't take you home with me and bless God every morning when I get up to pray to come over and get up, get up, time to pray, time to pray, time to pray. Can't do that. I won't do that. But you're going to have to do that. Remember me telling you when we went into the thing with prayer, you need to set your alarms. Don't wait to be unctioned by the Holy Ghost. Why? Some of you wouldn't know the Holy Ghost if he came in and sat down next to you. You wouldn't know. So let's, let's get away from this spiritual stuff. Let's set the alarm clock and let's get up. Well, what time did he do it? Well, you choose. Now, as I taught to you in prayer, the, 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 the powers of darkness, the world, of the supernatural, is quieter in the early morning hours because darkness, uh, the demons, use people first, animals next, and anything else after that that they can use. People that have demonic possession are sleeping. The spirits, okay, well, they never sleep or slumber. No, but they're quiet. They're not as active. You can get more done in the early morning hours. Get up an hour before you usually get up. How's that one? Oh, does that hurt? That shouldn't. That's a whole lot better than getting up at 2 o'clock. Huh? Now, of course, this is providing now, if you're on the job, I realize you can't pr pray unless uh, uh, you go out in the parking lot at noon and get in the car. Well, 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 well wait a minute here. I mean, I've got to go out to McDonald's and maybe stop by Wally World, okay? What are you willing to give? What kind of game do you really think we're playing here? Am I the only one that's willing to absolute stand the gap and make up the hedge for you? Are you coming in this thing just to tag on to the, tag on, bless God, to the statistics of this prophet? Because if you are, you're in the wrong room. I've been more than kind throughout the time that you've been with me. Well, maybe not as kind at times you'd think I should be, all right? I'm going to take you places you've never been. But I hope at least you pray in the evenings when you come home from work. If you can't pray three times a day, at least pray, pray two. Amen? Yeah. Oh, man, that's pretty good. I'd say 50% of you said amen on that. Woo! Make it 52%. said, how'd you know that? The Holy Ghost told me. he tell you things like that? You'd be surprised what he tells me up here. I think most of you know I could come down through this, this audience tonight and I could tell you things, the bless God, that you don't even want God to know, even though he does know, or I wouldn't know. Eh, we're not going to do that. Somebody say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Prophet's going to be nice tonight. Tomorrow I can't promise anything. <laughs> Maybe I'll stay at the motel. <laughs> oh, okay, that'll work. Okay, let's, let's, let's jump over to uh, uh, 1 Samuel 5. I'm sorry, 1 Samuel 7. I'm going to get done here. Just hang on. Wow, dear God in heaven, there must be 5,632 scriptures, give or take a few. 1 Samuel 5, 7, 5 through 8. And Samuel said, Gather all Israel to Mesbeth, and I pray for you unto the Lord. Now look, he's already saying tomorrow, I'm going to intercede. And they gathered together at Mesbeth, and drew water and poured it out before the Lord and, and fasted on that day. Oh, you mean there's fasting with intercession? Looks like it, doesn't it? And said there, we have sinned against the Lord, and Samuel judged the children of Israel in Mesbeth. And when the Philistines heard that the children of Israel was gathered together in Mesbeth, the lords of the Philistines went up against Israel. 
And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid of the Philistines. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, Cease not to cry unto the Lord our God for us, that he will save us out of the hand of the Philistines. What's going on? They're in trouble. Why didn't they pray? Didn't know how. But they knew somebody 